but also other streams, the importance of the government's context. The fact that values are only relevant within a particular context and that you need to understand the relationship between them and the context, that there are tremendous spatial differences, often of cause and effect, but also of distribution within the landscape, sometimes even very closely from one hectare to the next. And of course, there are very different uh, distributions of power as well, and in many cases, the challenge is to set up a negotiation framework or a framework how these different actors can interact and talk about these issues. Now, the rest of the team didn't want to highlight a particular presentation, but I, I did want to pick the, the one on the forest in Switzerland, where there was a very elaborate analysis showing the importance of these forests and how they are being managed to prevent avalanches and, and uh, landslides. So one could argue, do you need this much research to prove this point, which is pretty self-intuitive. Or, on the other hand, isn't that necessary, especially at the beginning, to really convince certain people that are doubting that, yes, it is clearly the better option. And I think, to a certain extent, this is an ideal case because we're proving this before the forests are all gone, and we're supporting the local actors who believe in this type of management to re we're reinforcing to them to the, the research um, to, to maintain this before it, it goes down the drain and we end up with the problems and then we can show wonderful wonderful numbers to demonstrate that. Yeah and this one doesn't belong particularly here, but it's definitely, definitely a very pertinent issue both here and in other sessions. So how can we measure and when can we see there has been an impact on policy? And that sometimes takes very long and many of us lose the patience in, on the way, but I think uh, we are seeing some, some impacts happening. Very briefly, the green um, stream, we saw in the plenary that the ecosystem services are used as a heuristic, so as a uh, frame of placing the different issues and flagging uh, research needs. It was pretty clear that more research is needed, especially beyond fisheries and especially in the deep seas, that he, in this community, maybe even the economists and the ecologists are not yet very easily talking to each other, so there's there's ground to be gained there as well. Policy challenges are more challenging as than in many other uh, situations, particularly concerning rights and institutions, and the different value dimensions for things that are totally unknown to, to humans or only now appearing on the scenes um, pose, pose different challenges there as well. There were a couple of presentations on NPAs, which were diverse in the sense of that it's not that easy to capture, really capture these spillovers and, and effects, but also some clear win-wins. Then I come to instruments. There was a range of instruments discussed. Um, there was a very um, high interest, that should have been an exclamation mark, on the integrating ecosystem services and impact assessment and SEA and uh, integrating trade-offs. Those were two or three sessions that were packed with people. There seems to be a strong bias in PS if you look at the distribution of, of instruments that have been discussed also across the entire um, conference with a certain focus on carbon and water, some biodiversity. I think there is definitely still quite a field to, to think broader. We have, we have different examples of other, of other instruments, but there seems to be a certain tendency, just like many people think teams just about monetary values, many people think economic instruments is just about PES. So, encouragement for opening up there. Most schemes seem to pay based on costs or inputs, very few on outputs or benefits. It's debatable whether this is a problem or why this might be a problem or um, how to go about this, but I think it's an interesting observation. There were some presentations on how to spread payments in space and time to optimize incentive um, 
they provide, and again, policy challenges with regard to rights and institutions. So, some more general points, values and valuations. The nature of value, should we limit ourselves to preference-based values? I would clearly say no, but that is a debate we have. Intrinsic values, option values, how to include the next generations. There are proposals of ombudsman who serve that role, for example, but it remains an issue. There were, were some interesting presentations on the ecological thresholds, and Steve has gone into this at some length. There was one that I found particularly intriguing, showing that the more values and ecosystem services we include in site selection at the local level, the more likely we are, a, we are like, uh, we, we will encounter a threshold at the regional level where we actually conserve our biodiversity worse. Because we start to tend to select the same type of sites that have this multifunctionality and, and get a lot of value out of the different services, but that means certain species might drop out. So that's definitely one of those points where we need to look out and see how can we incorporate this into our analysis in order to avoid this happening. And there were also some very interesting developments with regard to this discursive value, nature of value. So rather than just asking some people on the street, what do you think about X, Y, Z, set up and allow for discussion of, 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 value, of the values of nature and what this means and this stuff was definitely played in the opening panel and there were several presentations including one that went into, into quite some detail with regard to outlining the, the concepts behind. This leads me directly to a point also made by Steve, the, the benefits versus values. I like to use this framework slide coming from the MIA outlining so hierarchy from structure and process over function service benefits and values. And personally I think it makes a lot of sense if we communicate and focus a lot on the benefits, whether or not we, we, we determine the values. The big difference is that if we have a value, it's very easy to lump it all up in one sum and if obscures totally who is behind this, who wins, who loses. Whereas when we look at the benefits, it's much clearer who benefits and who loses in each of the options. And there was also some discussion on the individual versus the social or collective nature of actors. So it makes a difference whether or not you speak to a person individually or whether you speak to a group or whether a group speaks to each other. And again, I think that plays a lot of role in this question of on what to focus and how to get at the benefits. Now, sorry, there's going to be some property rights 101 here because there were a couple of citations on, well, there are no property rights defined, so we can't do anything at that level. And three years after Lynn Ostrom winning the Nobel Prize that um, startles me a little and therefore I'd like to go into the very basic question, what are property rights? Are property rights a relationship between a person and a resource? I would say yes and no. They establish some kind of a right of a person towards a resource, but actually what they say is that there's agreement among the people that a certain person or a certain group of persons has a right to a resource. And they cover a very broad range of different rights, which play a huge role in ecosystem services, because many of the services, well, it's really not decisive that I inherit the right to breathe clean air to someone. It's, it's more a question of access, it's a, it's a question of can I withdraw from this, can I exploit this, who is managing, who is being excluded, etc. And yes, we have very different legal frameworks and I, I doubt that there is a situation where there are no property rights. We, we have property rights just that they may, may be competing, they may be unclear, they may be not clearly established for certain goods and 